Hi, everyone. Welcome to Amplified, where we make God larger, greater, louder, and more powerful in our lives. And I just want to welcome you again to another episode here of Amplified. And we're going to just pretty much uh, continue from where we left off last time. And we're going to continue on with There Is No Fear Here. Last time we talked about, you know, some of the words that we use. Um, we got to watch what we say because sometimes we're just so scared and we're saying we're scared that we're kind of just directing our, our lives into a different way by speaking words that are negative. So we're going to continue that on today. And I would like to start that with um, Romans. Well, before we even go there, go get a paper and a piece of and a pen or something so that you can jot down some notes. I always like to encourage everyone to follow along with us, but also get engaged with us, write notes, um, take questions and stuff. We'll have available chat areas for you in the future. Um, but just want to let you know that get somebody on the on the phone right now and say, why don't you join uh, Rachel Reed with Amplified because there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be learning and a lot of great things. So today, let's go ahead and start with Romans 12 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, what does that mean? Well, a lot of us pretty much have our, you know, we're set in our ways, like you hear that statement say, well, you're set in your ways. Well, a lot of us are, and uh, pretty much we got to change that up a little bit. If we're thinking thoughts of fear, if we're saying words of fear, oh, and once again, let me just really remind you, if you're just starting out and watching, this is your first episode, we always talk about death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we always want to uh, share with you that the purpose of this episode, this program, is to encourage you to speak words of life into you encourage you to speak words that are going to direct your path in a positive way and um, and also to line up your words with what God says it's not just about saying whatever you want to say however you want to say it whenever you want to say it but it's using wisdom with the words that we say so getting back to the scripture but be transformed by the renewing of your mind well what does that mean well simply that means that our old way of thinking our old way of speaking our old way of you know, saying things and they just blurt out without even thinking about them, that's not going to be okay anymore. It means, Lord God, change my mindset. Change the way that I think about what I say and how I say it. Like if you used to say, you know, I'm so scared or I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. If that's what first comes out of your mouth, well, we got to change that. That means transform the way you think. Well, maybe another way to say it is, I'm not sure about how to do that, but I'm going to try it a different way. Or I'm willing to try something different or I'm willing to learn something different versus the, I don't think I could do it or I'm afraid. So it's really about changing the way you think. And when you do that, you'll change the way you speak. But how do you transform your mind? Well, first of all, the spirit of God gives us a sound mind. The Bible says that he gives us a sound mind. He gives you a sound mind. He doesn't give you a confused mind because confusion is not of God. So if you're confused, let me just stop you right there. That's never God. God is not a God of confusion. If you're scared and you're full of fear because something, let me stop you right there too. God is not fear. He's not giving you fear. He is not fear. So anything that's contrary to what, who God is, who Jesus is, anything that's against that, it's never going to be God. So when you start to speak thoughts, what about, let me, what about this one? Thoughts of, of death. What about saying things of death? Oh, that's killing me. Or I'm going to die. See, th those comments um, and those things that come out of your mouth definitely are not thoughts or things that should be coming out of our mouths as a believer. As people that love God and know God, we should never be speaking those, even if you're joking. Even if you're joking. Well, why do you say that, Rachel? Well, even if you're joking, you know, when you say something, it gets out there and anybody can hear it. But not only anybody, so does the enemy. So does the devil. If you don't believe there's a devil, let me just tell you right now, there is. Why do I say that? It's because it's in the Bible. The Bible says there's a devil. There's a, as an enemy that's trying to come after us to destroy us, and that's true. So I'm just saying, he says it, so it's true and it's real. So just as e easy as we speak words of life, just as easy as we speak words of, of encouragement and love and hope and all that, Sometimes we mess things up because we're speaking words that are negative, full of death, full of fear, full of anger, full of deceit, full of hate. Um, and those kinds of things really don't help us and really kind of should show you and I that we need to transform our mind. We need to change our mind so that we speak different things. We need to believe 
things that are good, that are honest. Oh, let me just get to that scripture. Philippians 4, 8 says, whatsoever things are true, whatever is honest, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is a good report. Think on those things. It says to think on those things. So as you think, and obviously you're going to speak what's in your heart. So let's begin to start thinking about things that are true and thinking about things that are honest and just. You know, one of the things that um, many do that are not helping, just like I said, to build our faith, it's fear. And that's what we're talking about today. There's no fear here. So you've got to first decide. Are you going to walk in faith? That means you're going to speak faith. Or are you going to walk in fear? That means you speak fear. So pretty much if you already know you're going to speak faith, I think you're good because you're already determined and you kind of already know which direction you want your mouth to go, which direction you want your thoughts to go, which direction you want your life to go. But some of you there that are going, yeah, well, I'm not quite sure yet. Well, let me tell you, you already decided, <laughs> you know, by default. Because of those of us that choose life, those of us that choose to follow God already are going in that path to speak the right thing, to do the right thing, to say the right thing. But those of us, those of you that haven't quite decided quite yet, well, the Bible says to choose life or death and life. You choose which one. But let me tell you something. It's always a good thing to choose life because we have life in God. We have life eternally. And so let me just talk to you a little bit about this uh, negativity that we're talking about here, which is called fear. You know, fear causes doubt. You know that because the Bible says that fear causes doubt and doubt is unbelief. Anytime there's doubt, there's no faith. And when there's no faith, I mean, God is in faith. God is not in doubt. God is in faith. Anything that's of faith is in God. And whatever's not in faith is sin. That's what the Bible tells us, that whatever's not in faith is sin. Well, I know you're probably saying, wow, you're getting a little heavy, Rachel, on this stuff here. But I'm just being simple to you. It may be a little harsh, but a little simple because it is that simple. You choose life or you choose death. You speak faith or you speak fear. And that's really, again, what this is about. If we want God to be larger, if we want God to be louder, if we want God to be more powerful, he's already all those things. He, he doesn't, he's all that already and more. But he wants us, you and I, to use our mouthpiece, our mouth, to make it bigger, greater, louder. How are they supposed to know? How are the people around us supposed to know? How's your family supposed to know? How's your coworkers supposed to know? Your neighbors, someone in the, at the store, a grocery store. How, how are they supposed to know that God is great and powerful and mighty unless we're saying it and we're speaking it with our own walk, with our own talk? That's really important. But just like I said before, fear causes doubt and doubt is unbelief. And as you know, you can't have both. It's either going to be faith or it's going to be fear. I choose faith. I hope you do too. Oh yeah, you do because you're watching. And let me tell you something, you know, as you know that uh, one must take priority over your heart as from it comes the issues of life. That's how you know what you're going to speak. That's how you know what you're going to say because it's in your mouth. It's what, whatever is in here, whatever is in your heart is going to come out in your mouth. If you're full of love in your heart, you're going to speak the love. If you're full of joy in your heart, that's going to come out of your heart, out of your mouth because it's already in your heart. You know, if you're full of just you like to laugh because that's who you are. You're just so full of joy and laughter. And that's what comes out of your mouth. You comments that are just fun and make people laugh and smile and, because that's what's coming from the inside. But what about some of us that or some of I'll say I won't say me because I don't want to be one that's negative and, and fearful. I want to be one that's full of the love and the joy and the presence of God in my mouth and what I speak and what I say. But again, the opposite, same thing. If you're full of anger, if you have anger in your heart, if there's anger in there, if there's, um, you just start yelling and getting mad and getting frustrated, then what do you think is going to come out of your mouth? What's in your heart? So it's really important that you realize what the heart is full of, the mouth speaks. That's what the word of God tells us. You will begin to speak what's in your heart. So what is in your heart? Let me just ask you that right now. Take a moment right now and kind of do a little heart check. What is in your heart right now? What are you thinking? What is the thing that's in your heart right now? 
you know, what, you know, what are you thinking about when I talk about what's in your heart? What's the first thing that comes up? Are you thinking, yeah, I think I'm okay. I think I, I'm, I, I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I go to church. Um, I read my Bible. I pray. I love God. I love others. So I, I yeah, I think I'm, I'm in that path of faith. I think I got there. I think I'm there, Rachel. But what about if some of you kind of were going, well, I woke up this morning. I got mad. Um, I kind of didn't have my coffee, but that didn't do it. It was, no, maybe you got mad in driving. You cut somebody off when you're going to work or <laughs> I don't know. What's in your heart? You know, are you frustrated? Are you mad? Well, let me tell you, take a moment to search your heart and do a self-reflection of your day. Was it filled with confusion or fear or negative words? Or was it full of peace, direction, and guidance in the spirit of God? It's very important that we do those things every single day. Well, please don't think that I'm not telling you that that there's never going to be an opportunity for the enemy to try to bring fear. Yes, the devil always tries to bring fear. That's his big goal. He always wants to try to sidetrack you. He always wants to try to sidetrack us so that we don't talk faith. He always tries to sidetrack us so that we're speaking negative words. He always tries to sidetrack us to make us say things that we don't want to say. So that's why we have to make sure that we guard our heart so we watch what we say. But yes, we're human. And then the enemy will try to bring fear. And they'll try to creep up and because that's the devil's job, like I said. But your role and my role as believers. Oh, wait, hold on. I hope we're all believers here, right? Just just a real quick sidebar. And I hope those, you believers are OK with this one. If you don't know Jesus, if you do not understand what I'm talking about when I say believers, those of us that pray and they read the word of God. Well, I want to encourage you to get to know Jesus the way I know Jesus, the way they know Jesus. I want you to know Jesus. He loves you very much, and he definitely wants to guide your steps. He wants to guide the way you speak. He wants to guide the way you walk, the way you talk. He wants you to live, you know, a life full of abundance. He wants you to live a life that's full of faith, not fear. And all you have to do is accept Jesus in your heart. You just have to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I need you to be Lord of my life. Well, what does that mean, Rachel? Well, you know, right now, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, that means you're Lord of your life. That means you're lording your life. That means you're telling your life what to do. That means you're making every decision and you don't care about what anyone else or even God says about it. But by you giving your life to God, you're saying, God, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to direct my steps. I want you to guide me. I want you to help me along the way because I definitely need the help, God. So help me along the way. That's what it means. Sometimes when we're praying a prayer of, to accept Jesus in our heart, we're thinking that we're, you know, not going to be uh, uh, having a life full of joy and happiness and, and things are going to change dramatically. Yes, they will change, but for the better. They'll change for the better. For every one of us, they'll change for the better. So I just want you to know, believe the word of God. And if you pray that little prayer with me right now, accept him in your heart. Let him be the Lord of your life. And he will forever change the way you speak, the way you think, the way you walk, the way you talk. He will just fill you with his love. He will just do some great things in your life. But the first thing we got to do is get rid of that fear. Get rid of the fear. Let the faith enter your heart and let God begin to do a work in your life. And so let's get back to this because we're ready to cut it. It's just so quick. These 15 minutes just slide on so fast. But I just want to let you know right now, the Bible does tell us that we need to walk by faith and not by sight. So we got to believe things. We got to believe that God is with us. He's for you. He's not against you. God is for you. So I just want you to know that God is good. God is faithful. And just like we said, again, every thought, everything you say must be lined up with the word of God. Our bodies, everything we do, lined up with the word of God. Our words, especially those of you that just got to know Jesus today, make sure that our words line up with God. Then they will because God will help you. God helps me. God's word is true. God's word is real. It's unchangeable. It's unmovable. His word is sharper than any two edged sword. I'll have to talk to you about that one in the next segment. But I just want to let you know right now, be free because God says you're free, free to speak words of life, free to speak truth. And until next time, continue to speak words of life and share this program. I want you to share this program with somebody that you know that needs to be amped up. Thank you for watching Amplified, where we make God larger, greater, louder and more powerful in our lives.